Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we are launching Raven 4 Venus 1, our Venus flyby probe, attempting to just dip its toes into the atmosphere of Earth's sister planet. This rocket, the Raven 4, is the exact same rocket we had launched for the Mars flyby. In fact, it was the backup vehicle designed in case of a failure of the Mars mission. But luckily, that mission went on as planned, and a little while later, we launched this one. And we also have a second one of these built, just like the Mars mission, in case of a failure. But so far, the launch is nominal, boosters have separated, and we are approaching main engine cutoff of our four outer engines, as well as separation of the half stage. Engine cutout and separation of that stage, we are away. Our LR-105 sustainer engine is pushing us all the way into a suborbital trajectory. And with a really low thrust to weight ratio relatively, we had to pitch up there quite a lot to fight off gravity. But this engine has a thrust to weight ratio of one point a lot. So we're capable of putting this thing into low earth orbit. And it will sit here for one or two orbits, I believe until a planned maneuver will send us to Venus on a 160 some day journey, I believe. Yep, I just checked the notes. 168 days after the trans Venus injection is when we will fly by and just barely touch the atmosphere of Venus. Here we're setting up our Principia flight planner to do just that. The spaghettified trajectory of the, you know, squiggly line coming off of the Earth there is our trajectory in relation to, I believe, the barycenter between Earth and Venus, if not just Venus's orbit itself. Um, but you see, uh, with those wiggles, it's really easy to determine where in their orbit we would be placing that maneuver node. And here we are just barely moving time and tangent to get ourselves a encounter with Venus's atmosphere, just bringing it down ever so slightly. Even the slightest of changes has a huge effect on where we will arrive. So making sure we're precise with this maneuver is extraordinarily important. Luckily, that's what the RCS on the craft is for. Our first ignition of this Juno upper stage, and actually the only ignition on the entire flyby, that's right, there is no need for a course a correction on this trajectory. I ended up with a pretty good time to do this. Uh, it lights fine and we are on our way. We cut the engines pretty close and then simply use RCS to put ourselves where we want. And I was attempting for a while to figure out where we would be when we arrive. Like part of the planning for this maneuver, where the trajectory would be is trying to figure out if we can get a daylight uh, flyby when we actually arrive at Venus, because I didn't really want to fly by at night. I figured it wouldn't really look that well. Uh, it would pretty much just be dark and we wouldn't really get to see a whole lot, despite it being a really, really cool prospect regardless. So I attempted to try to figure out where the sunlight would be on the planet and where we would be in relation to it to try to get us something during the day. And um, I think, I think I ended up with something good. We'll see later in the episode. On screen now is the launch of Squawk 1 and Squawk 2. Both missions were successful, so I only felt the need to put one of them here. Uh, this is launching a commsat, uh, specifically starting a new commsat array, and more specifically, one that will last a long time. As we know from previous episodes, I had put a commsat relay in place in low Earth orbit, but they were pretty low tech solar panels and they have degraded by now another year or so later after launching them and uh, they have all died like part way through like venus missions and stuff they have all died so we're placing a rather well it's a sort of an ugly looking satellite but it is purely designed out of necessity these have higher tech solar panels and these are designed to last for probably years to come. So our idea is to launch four of these Squawk satellites into a roughly 10 million meter orbit. And on screen here, we have the arrival of Squawk 2 in that orbit, and we can see Squawk 1 already there. Just trying to space these out as much as I can, 
However, I was not extraordinarily precise with these orbits. Despite putting their orbital period relatively close to each other, I believe looking at the Mechjeb window while using Principia is not a very accurate depiction of the actual orbital period. What I should have done is gone to the Principia window and looked at our orbital info from there because these satellites do not stay where I place them. I placed them first of all on the lunar plane and over a while from launches from the first one to the second one, third one, which ended up having a second stage failure. So the fourth one to the fifth one, that first satellite is no longer on the lunar plane at all. So instead of launching each one onto the lunar plane, in order to keep them all on the same plane at least, I always targeted the Squawk 1 satellite for the plane of future satellites. So at least they're all on the same plane, even if they don't say in relation with the Earth. But as I was saying about keeping them spaced out, they do not stay where I put them. I don't know if it's just my non-accuracy to blame or if it's Principia being a little wobbly with orbits as gravity does, or possibly a mix of the two. But a lot of times I check the map and see where our satellites are and we have three clumped on one side of the planet, one on the other side completely, lots of blackout areas. But you know, for our purposes, I'm pretty sure that we have at about 80% chance of full coverage at any maneuver at any given time around low earth orbit. And that's really all I can ask for. And we still have one satellite left over from the previous array, the R3.5. So that one's on another plane, which is also helping. You see how scattered that is? The entire side of the Earth over there is just not covered. But for our purposes, like I just said, we should be okay. This will do us just fine. All that was simply buying time for our Raven 4 Venus 1 probe to arrive at its destination. And Venus is approaching see that beautiful blue terminator which we do get to see light up the craft as we enter through uh, the atmosphere and unfortunately as you can see we ended up on the dark side of venus but however this led to a rather nice view of the sunrise as we approached through the atmosphere on the other side so although i completely uh, completely missed the target. Like, I was as far away from a day side flyby as possible. We got to see an unexpected blue glow on the craft as we rose from the Venus atmosphere, and that was just so cool to witness. I honestly did not expect that at all. I'm pretty sure on stream, I was just speechless. So this flyby mission is successful and is now transmitting science back to Earth. And with this flyby mission complete, we have collected quite a lot of science. The Mars flyby got us 121.9 science, and this one got us 128.6 science. And that science is going to be utilized for getting technology for crewed flights and getting that back up and running. Now with the completion of this, 1967 is coming to a close. Next episode, we will be attempting to land a probe on the moon with a brand new space probe, as well as trying to get our crewed program up and running. Because there is a bit of a deadline coming up, unfortunately, and it seems to be creeping up rather quickly. We accepted a contract about a year ago to help fund these flyby missions to fly by the moon with a crewed vehicle. And right now, we do not have the technology or the rockets to do so. So, starting next episode, will be sort of a mad dash, ride or die, lunar flyby or bust initiative. But until then, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.